In today's video, we will be discussing physical and chemical properties of matter. This is part one of three videos, so make sure you check out parts two and three also on the channel. Physical properties. Let's begin here. A property is a characteristic or feature of something. A physical property is a property that can be observed without changing the identity of the substance. This means that it's a feature or a characteristic that we can observe in something without having to create some chemical reaction in order to observe it. I know this concept seems a little bit abstract at this point, but as we run through the different examples of physical properties, I hope this concept will make more sense as we apply it to real world examples. For now, can you think of an example of a physical property? The seven properties we will be covering are number one, color. Number two, mass. Number three, volume. Number four, density. Number five, temperature. Number six, conductivity. Number seven, physical state. And there are many more, but these are the seven that we will be covering. Number one, color. How can we define the concept of color? Scientists define color as a pigment or shade reflected by light. This implies that in the absence of light, color would not be observable. Remember the stress? What color is it to you on your screen today? Is it black and blue? Or might it be white and gold? Or maybe even a different combination? Feel free to even pause this video at this point and grab a family member and ask them the question so you can involve them in what we are learning. Although most of us see similar colors, because we are all unique and our eyes are actually not completely identical, special photos like these may cause us to see different colors depending on how we are processing the light that is being reflected into our eyes. This is a second activity where you can try it with a friend or a family member who is home with you. Um, the challenge is to read the actual color of the font as opposed to the word that the letters are spelling. Um, we and our brains try to make sense of the world and we have the skill of reading words based on a combination of letters, but we also have the skill of being able to identify colors as they're reflected by light into our eyes. And when both processes are happening at the same time, sometimes our brains feel very confused. So it's a fun little challenge where you can read the font color like green, yellow, red, black, green, blue, as fast as you can, and see if you can do it without any mistakes. The second physical property we are discussing is mass. Mass is the amount of matter in something. And we have learned the definition of matter, which also included mass, since matter is anything that has mass and takes up space. But students sometimes confuse the concept of mass with weight. So today, I want to ensure that this concept is clarified for you. Weight has a different definition. Weight is the amount of gravity working upon something. We notice the word gravity in its definition, which is a force of attraction that naturally exists between all objects. And we know that gravity tends to increase if an object is bigger. So here on Earth, gravity happens to be a downwards force because the Earth is so massive and the force of the Earth's attraction all pulls us downwards towards the center of the Earth. So mass and weight are different because weight is the amount of matter in something plus the amount of gravity actually working on that mass. Mass is measured in grams, abbreviated with a lowercase g, while weight in the metric system is measured not in pounds because that's customary, it's actually measured in newtons, named after Sir Isaac Newton. 
This is an image of a triple beam balance, which is an instrument in science used to specifically measure mass. So notice that it's not a scale, it's different because it tells us how much grams something is made up of and how it works is it's a balance system. They have these riders of certain masses that have to perfectly zero the triple beam balance um, and allows us to find out how much matter something is made up of. Of these three glasses, which has the greatest mass? If you answer glass number three, you are correct because it has the greatest amount of water in the glass. Although all three glasses have different amounts of air, air is something that does not have a lot of mass, although yes, it does have mass because air is also matter. Also, when we learned about the different elements of our periodic table of elements, you might recall that we learned the concept of atomic mass indicated usually by the decimal number. So now we understand that mass is just referring to how many atoms, how much matter makes up each of the elements. And finally, this illustration really summarizes visually the difference between mass and weight. If an astronaut on Earth were to go to the moon, his or her mass would stay exactly the same unless they maybe go on a diet or eat a really big meal before their trip. But more than likely, their mass will stay the same because the amount of matter they're made up of is not going to shift largely unless there's some external circumstance that causes them to. But look at weight. The astronaut on Earth with his or her suit on weighs about 1,200 newtons. But on the moon, 200 newtons. It's exactly a sixth of his or her weight on the Earth. And we know the reason for this change is because the amount of gravity. The moon, contrary to popular belief, does not have zero gravity. But it does have a little gravity. But the amount of gravitational pull is so small because the moon is small, which is why the weight is going to be less on the moon than on Earth. Concept number three, volume. Volume is the amount of space something takes up. It is measured in liters and that is a capital L on purpose because liters, if abbreviated with a lowercase l, could look like the number one. And if someone were writing 11 liters, it could look like 111 if you didn't use a capital L. So please ensure that you use a capital L or a cursive L so that we avoid confusion. So liters is a unit used to measure liquid volume and how much space liquids take up, while cubic centimeters or cubic meters with this exponent of a three is the proper unit we use to measure solid volume, such as cubes, rectangular prisms. Students often confuse the concept of volume and mass because we talk about them together, but please ensure that you recognize that while mass is the amount of matter in something, volume is talking about the amount of space something takes up. So let's see if you really got this. Which glass has the greatest volume? The answer is all three of them. All three of them are glasses that take up the same amount of space. We're not referring to the amount of matter or amount of water in them. We're talking about how much space they take up. But if we were to tweak this question and ask which glass has the greatest volume of H2O, then the obvious answer is glass number three because it has the greatest amount of space that H2O or water is taking up. Physical property number four density will be continued on video part two.